Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn this illustration done in Procreate into this little animated scene put together using Dreams and Motion Leap. Let's get right into it. The main principles applied in this demonstration are the following. First, a simple keyframe animation for the vapour above the waterfall and the bird. Second, creating motion for the river and waterfall inside Motion Leap and integrating it into our dream scene via masking. And third, adding subtle parallax motion to the entire scene. At the end, we will take a quick look at how we can transfer these principles to other scenes like these. In case you want to follow along, I have provided a link to download the Procreate file in the description. But first up, we'll take a look at how I prepared my illustration inside Procreate. For the purpose of recreating this scene in Dreams, I divided all objects into a useful layer structure, joining objects together according to their estimated z-depth. To further elaborate on this concept, imagine your scene in 3D space. An object's z-depth is its distance relative to the camera along the z-axis. Keep this concept in mind as it will come in handy later when creating the parallax motion for our scene. But for now, we have our scene prepared and can go ahead and open up Procreate Dreams in Split View. Starting from scratch, we press on the plus button and create a new Dreams file. Then we add in six new tracks in Dreams and import our layers from top to bottom in the order we intended in Procreate. This can be done by just dragging and dropping them onto the tracks. Every layer is then set in length to match up with the timeline. By pressing Dream 8 in the middle left side, we can open up properties and change the frames per second which in this case are already set to the desired 24 FPS. In addition, we can set the duration to 8 seconds. By grouping every layer together, their length is adjusted collectively to match the 8 seconds timeline duration. Also, grouping them is useful for camera movements later on and by scaling the group, we can match all tracks to the canvas size. To keep things tidy, every track is renamed. Now our scene in Dreams is ready for some animation. First up, the vapour moving up from the waterfall. We'll go ahead and create a new layer track under the foreground layer. This is where our vapour texture will sit in the scene. Going into Draw Mode, I open up this cloud texture brush I grabbed from a free brush set somewhere on the internet. This is really useful for quickly creating a texture looking like vapour, clouds, smoke or anything similar. By pressing the timer, we can change the background colour to transparent to better see what we are doing. At the start of the timeline, the vapour's position is keyframed to sit just underneath the waterfall and then, at the end, the vapour is moved onto the canvas and keyframed again. The easing is set to linear because a constant vapour motion feels more natural in this case. A few more tweaks here and there until you are happy with the overall result. Next, we will animate the movement of the bird applying the same keyframe animation method used for the vapour. At the beginning, the bird's position is keyframed off screen to the left. then moved to the right, scaled, rotated and keyframed again.
The easing is set to ease out and the timing of the animation adjusted by moving the keyframes along the timeline and again some tweaks here and there until the motion feels natural. At this point, you could also try out Dream's performance mode by pressing on the circle icon. Now, we will move on to creating the motion of the river and waterfall in an app called Motion Leap, which unfortunately is subscription based, but you could get similar results using Runway AI Gen 2. Go check out some tutorials on that if you want to save a buck not subscribing to Motion Leap. Runway AI gives you some credits by signing up for a free trial. Links to both in the description. I exported the illustration as a PNG from Procreate and opened up Motion Leap. By pressing Start a new project from Gallery and selecting the PNG of our scene, we are ready to go. With our project canvas open, we get several options. The Animate option gives us the ability to use a select brush to select the area we want to animate. The brush can be scaled and also erased to properly mask out the desired area. The Direction option lets you draw several direction arrows which determine the motion of the selected area. Again, just play around with it for a little while until you like the motion and are ready to export. Back inside our dream scene, we go ahead and create a new track on top of our current foreground containing the river and waterfall and import, the movie clip we just exported from Motion Leap. By lowering its opacity, we can match its scale up with the other objects on the canvas. Don't forget to reset the opacity value back to 100% after you're done. After creating a new track on top of the movie clip containing our river animation, we start drawing all over the area covered by the river and waterfall. The red area will act as mask for the animation created in Motion Leap. After we finish covering the area, we press onto the red drawing in Timeline, then select Mask and Layer Mask. Now, the red area is serving as a mask for the Motion Leap clip to show only the river area. To actually see what we did here, we can group the mask and movie clip track together and move them off canvas, but don't forget to undo to reset their position. Finally, we are ready to move on to the last step creating a slight zoom in with subtle parallax motion for our entire scene. To do so, we select the group containing all the elements in our scene and keyframe its initial position at the beginning of the animation. After double checking that the anchor is right in center of the canvas, we jump to the end of the animation and set a keyframe with the entire group of elements zoomed in just a little bit. Now we created a fake camera zoom into the scene. But at the moment, there is no parallax motion happening. Now it's time to remember our Z depth layer structure from earlier. By doing little adjustments to each individual layer, we can now create some parallax effect. As a general rule of thumb, just remember the following. When there is camera movement involved, Objects closer to the camera or viewer move more and faster, while objects move slower and less the further their distance to the camera. With this in mind, we go ahead, grab our foreground layer and adjust its scale at the end of the animation to be a little more zoomed in than the rest of the scene. Now we can see that due to the accelerated zoom speed of the foreground layer, there is already parallax effect in relation to the rest of the scene. The easing is then set to ease in and out, giving the zoom a smoother feeling.
We then move down through our layers, adjusting their zoom level, while decreasing the zoom intensity the further we get into the distance. This process is kind of intuitive, so just play around with it until you feel like the different zoom speeds are adding a sense of depth to the scene. Just think of sitting in the back seat of a car as a kid. The trees next to the road fly by in seconds, while clouds on the horizon seem to be frozen in time. Every motion, whether it be to the left, right, up or down, decelerates the further we get into the distance. Everything put together will return you this result. As a bonus, we can now take these concepts and transfer them to other scenes. In this one, all the cloud textures are on different tracks and moved to the right with decreasing speed the further they are in the distance by simply keyframing their position, just like we did with the vapour on our waterfall. The same is done with the boat and the shadow it is casting on the water. The water effect is done in motion leap and masked into the scene with the same method as for the river animation. The waterfalls and ocean movement in the back is also masked in like this, while the animation was done using Runway AI Gen 2 to create the motion. The background is separated from the rest and moved at a slower pace, while all the elements are moved upwards to create the illusion of a camera panning down. As a little detail, Gaussian blur is key framed on the fore and background to create the effect of a change in focal length with depth of field, returning this result. In this scene, the motion of the airship is once again achieved by keyframing its position, rotation and scale. The clouds and all scene objects are separated into a useful layer structure according to their z-depth and then moved to the left at different speeds to create a camera swing to the right with parallax effect. All the light rays and light effects are on different layers and faded in or out by key framing their opacity level. Also, warp, distort and animated masks are used to create some movement in the light effects. I hope this was helpful and stay tuned for more tutorials and animated clips in the future. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments.